What a delight it is to open God's Word again with you this week as we join us at One Heart Church and we celebrate how God works in each one of our lives in a very personal way. Jesus gave instructions on how to become a disciple and how to, how to live out uh, effectively what it is he's called us to do. And so by the time you arrive at today's message after looking and watching uh, this entire series, perhaps you have watched throughout uh, the entire fall and you've learned that Jesus very distinctively equips his people to accomplish his mission. And what you discover too is if you're ineffective, uh, then you miss a lot of the opportunity God has in store for you. So uh, today we find ourselves at the culminating point uh, of an entire study that has uh, captured our attention and our hearts throughout the entire fall. Uh, and now as we head towards Thanksgiving, uh, we have a chance to be able to wrap it all together because we come to the place where Jesus makes the defining, defining aspect of discipleship. He links it three ways, that we will be willing to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. And so you ask yourself the question, you know, what sets the tone for that instruction? And we know that, that uh, Jesus made it very clear early on uh, in chapter 6. You had to come to him, you had to learn from him, and you had to act on it. Uh, today, we arrive at, at, the, at the final message in this series. It's my prayer that today's message will speak deeply into your heart uh, and allow you to experience what he intends for you. Because today we look at what it means uh, to heed the key instructions that Jesus gives in order to become effective. Heeding the key instructions for effectiveness. We find ourselves today in Luke chapter 9. And if you have your Bible, I want to encourage you to open up that text. And as you're opening there, I want you to reflect back on uh, what it is God's shown you through the years, the ways that he's taught you to walk with him, uh, ways he's taught you to lean into uh, what it is the Spirit of the Lord is saying to your heart and life. And for me personally, this has been a very enriching and amazing fall as we have dived in deeply into Luke chapter 5 through 9 now. And as we do that, we understand something, that Luke records with detail things that are absolutely essential for you and I. And today we arrive at that place where we begin to look in and understand a lot more about effectiveness because here's what you have to ask yourself. How effective, when it comes to your own life, how effective do you feel to live out his instructions for your heart? How effective do you feel? Do you feel like, hey, you know, God's equipped you a certain way. He's motivated you a certain way. He's sustained you a certain way. He's opened the door for you to experience life in a certain way. And then as a result of it, you start thinking, well, I'm more effective in my prayer life. I'm more effective in my Bible study. I'm more effective in my service to God. I'm more effective in the things that matter the most. You see, the reality is no one wants to be ineffective. Everyone wants to accomplish what God's called them to do. And so my challenge for you today is simply this. Sit back, relax, listen, apply, and watch what it is he'll show to you. Because I think he will show you something. Because we know this. If you follow God's instruction, you await his response. You're going to end up having an impact with your life. And so today we look at what happens. The more effective we are, the more impactful we are. And that's where feeding the 5,000 ties into this story as well as Jesus commissioning and sending out those who are his disciples. And so as you think about that, you have to ask yourself, what's the key? And, and the truth of the matter is that the key to effectively executing his word in our lives is directly linked to our hearts. So if our heart's in it, and if we are, if we are completely connected to what it is he's trying to say to us, what happens to our heart? We get a chance we get a chance to experience what he intends. And his word is what allows us to encounter him in living, vibrant, dynamic ways. If we don't expose our hearts to his word, then we miss the opportunity to experience his will. Because his word, watch this, speaks his will. It speaks to our hearts. It speaks to our life. So in Luke chapter 9, we come to this culminating point of this entire study. And it's a place where Jesus tells the twelve... This is what you do to be effective. Uh, he, he challenges them in feeding 5,000 people, even though I think it, they think it's impossible. And then he brings them down to those very poignant, powerful verses that you and I are very familiar with. But we look at them again today to make sure we don't miss what it is God's going to say to us. So let's look at a few verses, if we could, and let's just see what it is that God is showing us from his word. First of all, uh, in chapter 9, verse 3. And he said to them, Take nothing for your journey, neither a staff, nor a bag, nor bread, nor money, and not, do not even have two tunics apiece. In other words, you don't need anything extra. Just go at it knowing God's going to provide for you all the way through. Verse 13, notice uh, he, he then makes another very profound statement to them. But he said to them, 
you give them something to eat. And that they said, we have no more than five loaves and two fishes unless perhaps we go and buy food for all these people. And there were about 5,000 men. And he said to his disciples, have them sit down to eat in groups of about 50 each. And you can imagine their minds had to be multiplying quickly because they're sitting there thinking, okay, we're going to put all these groups in 50 and we don't have, we don't have much to feed them. And how are we going to do this? And they, they end up experiencing one of those moments they can never forget the rest of their life. And listen carefully. When it comes to our faith journey, when it comes to the experiences God has for us, there are moments that we never want to miss. We don't want to miss them no matter what because they shape the rest of our journey. This, the, the, the season we're in right now, shaping our hearts to accomplish what he intends. Listen carefully. It could be he's trying to shape your heart in a particular way to accomplish a certain task. And what he knows is he has to speak into you in such a way that you know how to yield to his word and submit to his spirit and empower and allow your heart to be empowered by God so that when you get done with that experience, you're able to say, the Lord has done a great thing. He's allowed me to experience something powerful, profound, and amazing. Verse 20, notice if you would. And it happened that while he was praying alone, the disciples were with him, and he questioned them, saying, Who do, who do people say that I am? And they answered, said, John the Baptist, or, or others say Elijah. But then he goes into verse 20, he says, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered and said, The Christ of God. You see, what is Jesus doing? He's drilling down into their hearts so that they can become effective. Because if they don't know who Jesus is, they can't accomplish what he intends. So today... Who do you say that he is? Is he the savior of your heart? Is he the God who orders your steps? Is he the God who understands afar what's going on with you and draws you close to him? That is my prayer. That's exactly who he is. Verse 23, the verse that obviously gives us our summation point of effectiveness. Notice what he says. He was saying to all of them, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life, whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, he is the one who will save it. Wow, what a promise. What a reminder to all of us that God has something in store for our hearts and lives that is absolutely essential. It's God's plan. It's a beautiful plan. And all we have to do is be willing to look at our lives the way he intended and to deny ourselves to take up our cross, that sacrificial aspect of life, and as a result, end up following him. Today, are you willing to deny yourself? Are you willing to take up your cross and follow him? If you are, then today's message will have great poignant impact on your heart and life. It has mine. I know today as we dive into it, I believe it's going to do something special for you as well. So there are three things I want you to see out of this text that, that are absolutely essential. First of all, uh, don't complicate your call in life. All right, because what Jesus does in verse one, he said, I, and he called and he called the 12 together, gave them power to do everything he intended for them to do. And then gives them these instructions about, you know, be sure as you as you go, don't take extra thing uh, as you enter, uh, you know, stay there until stay in the inner city or house, stay there. And if someone doesn't receive you, shake the dust off your shoes. So let's think about this. How much clarity did he bring to the whole concept of us? making sure that we simplify, not complicate, his call in our life. He brings it, he succinctly brings to light three very distinctive things. First of all, you learn to rely completely on God. You see, what he was saying was, don't take all these things that you are dependent on. Rely on me and watch me work. The second thing you see is he made it clear to stay focused while you're on mission. And the way you do that is that you, know, you go to one place, you stay there until you leave that city. In other words, stay focused. Don't let something distract you. And what you discover is distractions are everywhere. But you and I understand something, that if our hearts are fixed on him, no distraction can take us away from God's purpose and his design for our lives. A third thing you see, and, we, and you, you've probably noted this, before, but he says, shake the dust off your shoes. If someone, you notice he says that in verse five, those who do not receive you, shake the dust off your shoes. Matthew 10 talks about this as well. What is he saying here? He's making it clear. Watch this. Do not be deterred by rejection. Be inspired by relationship. Do not be deterred by being rejected by someone. You have a relationship with Jesus that carries you all the way home. So what's the concept here? It's the important thing to realize this. 
never forget, there will be enemies. There'll be people who come at you, but realize you operate with divine guidance. In other words, there are things that are going to come at you that you didn't understand. You, I mean, you don't understand. You, you didn't anticipate. And but what what does Jesus make clear here? Just execute, execute with excellence what it is I called you to do, and you'll get to experience something that's absolutely amazing. So that's the first thing we see. We learn how to not complicate our call in life. And one of the reasons I have enjoyed being a boy raised in Arkansas is that there's not much complicated to come out of Arkansas. And uh, so I learned a simple faith with a great God who led me to profound experiences, all of which are anchored in simplicity. I want to challenge you to do the same thing. Wherever you are in the world today, whether you're watching this in Atlanta, Georgia, or you're watching it somewhere else in the world, don't complicate what it is God wants to do in your life. Keep it simple. Second thing you see is this, and that is uh, learn to obey uh, when it's hard to understand. So here's what transpires beginning in verse 13 or verse 12. What happens is uh, Jesus uh, is obviously impacting thousands of people, thousands. And uh, he realizes they're hungry, that they have a need. And so he tells the disciples uh, to feed them, to give them something. And it's interesting because when you look at it, he says, you give them something. It is a command. It's an emphatic command. And they're, still, they're probably sitting there going, wow, I don't understand I don't understand what Jesus wants me to do. And then he teaches them and shows them because all of a sudden, they, heaven blesses. Heaven blesses what's transpiring there. And it's interesting to me because um, when, they, when they arranged everyone, had them sit down in verse 15, he took all that in verse 16, he blessed it. And as he blessed it, uh, he, he, began to, he began to watch as it multiplied. And, uh, and out of that, they end up, you know, the Bible says that, that they, uh, everyone ate and was satisfied and there were still 12 baskets full of God's provision. So when you think about how important it is to obey, even if you don't understand, they didn't understand, but they obeyed and God showed them what can transpire. It's the same thing happens in our lives. So what do, we, what do we need to realize? First of all, Jesus always has compassion. He cares about every person, every circumstance, every situation. He has compassion in his heart uh, for every person. Second thing is this, Jesus always meets needs. Uh, we sometimes think about what our wants are, but what the need of the hour was, was with thousands of people hungry, and Jesus met that need. And what a blessing it is to see that Jesus is always looking for those who are hungry, those who need an answer. Jesus came. He was seeking to save those who were lost, those who were hurting, those who were looking for what it was that only he could give them. And the final thing you see is this, Jesus always gives instructions. So if you're wondering how, which way to turn and what to do, remember this, his instructions are clear, his commands are, are divine, and as a result of that, you get a chance to live out his commands by becoming more effective, by executing what it is God's called you to do, by not having to understand everything, but trust him. Trust in the Lord, Proverbs 3 says, well, with all your heart, don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your steps. What a great promise. Final thing I want you to see today is this, because these, this brings us to uh, the culminating point of, of Jesus' interaction with his disciples related to their personal walk, what they're called on to do, what they're supposed to do with their life. And it, and it has to do with this whole idea of grasping the power of his identity, realizing that it's Christ at work in us, Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who writes a story uh, worth reading. He writes an amazing story in all of our hearts and lives. And today, he's writing a story in your life. He's writing a story in your heart. And you look at it, if you would, uh, because you'll notice that what happens in verse 18, he asks the question, who do people say that I am? Why is he doing it? He's clarifying for them an understanding of how it is he intends to work in each one of their lives by them knowing who Jesus is. If you don't know who he is, you can't accomplish what he intends. And so, very powerful, very powerful text. And one of my favorites uh, in the Gospel of Luke, and I hope it will encourage you and bless you and motivate you and challenge you as it relates to where you are. Because he goes on to talk about how important it is. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? What does it profit? It profits nothing. And so what, what do we do? We want to do the right kind of math. We want to make sure we experience what God intends for us. And so when it comes to Jesus' identity, three things I want you to see to grab hold of and that I hope will be helpful to you. First of all, we have to personally experience him. 
all right? Uh, when, when, he, when he talks about who do you, people say that I am, when they, they ultimately, you are the Christ. You are the Christ. You're the one. Uh, as Peter said, you're the Christ of God. You are the answer. You're the Savior for mankind. So you and I have to understand how to personally experience him. The second thing that's really important for each one of us is for us to come to a place where we grasp and understand that we have to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. And uh, many different times I've preached out of this text. Every time I've preached out of it, I'm reminded of how important it is that we set aside our desires to accomplish his will. Because sometimes our desires are conflicted with what his will is. And so we set that aside. We trust him. We obey him. And we watch him do amazing things in each one of our lives. One final thing that I want you to look at as you, as you kind of think through in your mind. Okay, I'm, I, to be effective then, I've got to be willing to not complicate things. I've got to be willing to, to obey even if I don't understand at times. And I've got to be willing to understand who he is. I've got to make sure I understand his identity. The final thing is this. We have to yield we have to yield to his eternal math because you realize that he, that he does something here. In verse 24, he says, For whoever wishes to lose his life, to save his life, will lose it. But whoever wishes to lose his life for my sake, he is the one who will save it. What unique math Jesus does here. And what he's trying to say is, if you identify in me, you are going to have a life. If you don't, you're going to miss life. Today, my challenge for you is to think about what we have looked at over these last number of weeks. Over 10 weeks, we've been in the middle of the Gospel of Luke, and we've been in the heart of what, what uh, Jesus' personal instructions are for disciples, and we've been challenged to live that out. And it's interesting because when you look at it, uh, you have to be willing to ask yourself the question, are you ready to follow him no matter what? Are you? I believe you are, but I believe you've been tuned into this uh, long enough to realize that he is the way, he is the truth. He is the life. He's the best thing that could ever happen to any of our lives. And I thank God that we get to serve him on a day-to-day -day basis, hour to hour, moment by moment, watching him work in our hearts and lives, even in our most challenging circumstances. So I, I end with this summation thought that I, that I hope will be helpful to you because when you read through all these texts, you, you, you come back to uh, making sure you don't forget that you, you should be sure to trust his timing, follow his instructions, and await his impact because he is going to do something profound in your heart and life. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice, we're glad in it, and my heart is on fire to accomplish his purpose. May your heart be motivated from this message to be sure to excel in what he has called on you to do so that the impact of your life will, will echo on way beyond your lifetime. You have the opportunity to do just that. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the amazing, powerful word Jesus' instructions, Jesus' clarity that he brings related to his identity, us making sure we don't complicate what it is you call on us to do. Lord, this is a great moment for us to stop, look inside our own hearts, and make sure we've yielded completely to you. Lord, we, we celebrate you. We celebrate what you're accomplishing in our lives, and we celebrate your goodness. Lord, you are good. You're faithful. You're true. We commit our hearts to you. We will follow you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to thank you for joining me. Obviously, uh, we're headed into the Thanksgiving season, and I wanted to be one of the first people to say Happy Thanksgiving to you, and I'm thankful for every one of you. Those of you who write me, who call, who uh, correspond and let me know what's going on in the hearts and life, your hearts and life, that blesses me, and I'm thankful for you, and may you have a fabulous and wonderful Thanksgiving. If you live somewhere else in the world, and perhaps you don't celebrate Thanksgiving like we do, we're thankful for you. We're thankful that you are part of the larger One Heart family that studies God's Word, that applies their hearts so that we could be authentic followers of Jesus committed to changing the world. God bless you. Have a fantastic week.